Oh no! Oh no! He's gonna die! Oh no! Oh, I thought he was about to pull it out of his ass, man. Wait. Wait. Wait! All right, guys, right off the bat, spectating, smoked a Marley. Bounty went the other way, and we went this way. Not sure exactly what's going on. His teammate decided to land way far away for a bounty. I definitely respect it. Never mind, he went there for a kill. My man, all right. But well, we have a bounty right next to us. We have a Marco. It's a viable weapon. We have two plates. It's, I'm not as plated as I want to be, but we can definitely push this fight. The fact that the enemy's playing in here and he's not peeking the windows to shoot at us lets me know he's not a good player. So let that intel give you the confidence to go in this 1v1, especially before his boy comes back and potentially kills you. Boom. It's that easy. Now, he played it a little crazy. Slow walking in the open, not hugging hard cover, not hugging the building, things like that. The reason why I want rather him hug the building like this, where's he at? Hug the building's walls as you're pushing up to it is because if you're out in the open and he does peek and he's aware, like when he peeked the doorway, if he's able to lock on and beam us, we have no cover. He, the enemy at least has the potential to sidestep behind walls and doorways to protect themselves. And also second, because you never know who's around you. Granted, it's early game, but look, we're, we're fighting here. It clearly was a long fight because we came in the middle of it. Um, if there are other enemies around, you're vulnerable, especially being on low ground. So whenever you're pushing fights, you always want to try to hug cover and concealment. And also guys, when you're fighting around buildings, just hug the buildings. I know a lot of players in their minds are like, I don't want the enemy to know I'm coming. He already knows you're there. You're level, he's level three threat. You're, you're right there. You've already shot at him clearly. So there's no sense in trying to play stealthily. There you go. Uh, number two, tip number two guys. Look, when you're heart beating, I'm gonna stop making fun of heartbeat users. Maybe not, but I'm gonna, for, for the sake of this video, I will. Uh, when, he, when he heart beats like that guys, and I'm gonna pause for a minute right here. When he heartbeats like that, it's not going to scan past your visual. You can see everything the heartbeat's picking up. So stop scanning the wide openness because when you start scanning your heartbeat, what happens? Your body slows down, your movement slows down, and then lo and behold, you can again get picked from the side. A lot of people are third party because they put themselves in that situation. I know from, from experience. So try to, again, master your movement. Use your movement to your advantage. Not really sure what we're doing at this point. So look, we got a bad start. Lodi is um, relatively safe. I'm really surprised he didn't drop Lodi. Yeah, he definitely should have dropped Lodi. Um, that's a huge L for Elite for sure. But again, in the midst of a game, dude, you got to stop getting tunnel visions. Don't be afraid to land on a loadout drop. Also, communication is important. His teammates should have let him know, yo, Lodi's safe. Go ahead and get it. Clearly playing with a random. Uh, Smoke's definitely being patient with your boy. Level 25. Whoa. All right, so newer player, so we'll go easy on him for sure. So look, and again, look at the waste of time. Now look, he's level 25, so I forgive him, but a lot of people we expect to do the same weird shit, and they're level 300s, 400s, 500s. They've got 12,000 kills, 20,000 kills. There's really no excuse for that. So again, Stop wasting this time. Right now, we've wasted about two minutes going back and forth to get our loadie. Secondly, what do you do after this? Well, I'm a huge proponent if you're going after wins, recons. I cannot stress this enough. We stopped talking about recons for the past year because I really try to shove it down y'all's throats in Verdansk. Um, if you guys want to win more consistently, you have to do recons. I think, I think we're ranked 17 in the world for having win streaks and quads, normal quads, and it's literally just because of recons. The intel of knowing where to go helps you out so much. And I'm not saying do all the recons and go post up in camp. You can if you want, but you can actually go out throughout the map, go on throughout the map and start taking fights and know when you have to rotate early. You can already predict the rotation way in advance. So a lot of people don't do recons because like, oh, I don't want to camp. You don't have to. We do recons and we don't camp most of the time unless, unless I'm running melee weapons and just trolling. We got a guy parachuting on the right hand side. I'm gonna chalk that up as FOV. I'm gonna assume. It honestly is amazing how many console players there are. 
I thought for sure the PC world would have the majority of players, but I am completely wrong. So right now, again, I want to talk about doing objectives. We said we talked about recon already. Right now, we're aimlessly running around. We're just working ourselves around until we find an enemy, until we hear gunshots, or until we get to a house we feel comfortable camping inside of. It's not something you want to do. There are multiple tactics to winning. If you want to win, recon. If you want to win, just look at the circle and predict where it's going to go and play high ground. If you want to get kills, you got scavengers for UAVs. We've got bounties we can do. Again, heartbeat in the open. We're scanning, scanning, scanning. Really no intel needed there. Oh, this is working for a treat. Just to let you know, too, I'm not I'm not VPNing. I'm not reverse boosting. We played Warzone for probably about three hours a day, and I dropped 320 kill games. This is the lobby I got. So it's not my first game of the day. It's six o'clock at night. I don't know why. I don't. I'm pretty sure like SBM just is a thing of the past when it comes to this game because the player base is so small. So if you're wondering how I get these lobbies, I don't know. I truly don't. Oh, we got a ping in here, hoping there's an enemy inside. There is, we hear the footsteps. Window breaking on the right-hand side. Well, he's rapping to the right, I should say. Now we're heart beating. Now we're heart beating. When the enemy's in full, uh, Full tailing out of there, bro. Do not heartbeat it because you're just not gonna you're not gonna pick them up. Gotta respect the level 25 for chasing down the enemy. Gotta respect it. Smoke's playing a lot more scared. Granted, he's level four prestige, but still, these are clearly two newer players struggling with movement, aim, 100 percent and just decision making. And look, this is why decision making is so important in this game. You can have bad aim, you can have bad movement. As long as you're playing smart, you can literally improve your gameplay. Overnight. All right, so right now it's technically a 2v1. The guy we were chasing has run off, but we're giving him time to come back here and stack with his teammate by playing like this. I do believe the enemy's on top of this building. I may be wrong, but I do believe he is. Weird. There he is. And he goes down, Dread goes in and gets killed. Now, this is definitely a lower tier lobby. I'd, I'd probably say for some reason, 0.8. Even judging by Dread, you know, playing the rooftop, very passive. Again, he could have just been waiting for a patient moment, but... <laughs> Game's been real weird lately in Warzone. But you know, we have those days. We have those days where it's just sweat fest, and we have those days where it's just blessing. So, I don't know. But yeah, guys, look. Aiming, snapping tracking it just comes with practice and reps you know you don't have to play the same game either you just gotta stay consistent at playing something to continue with with those reps um when it comes to movement look at him he's crouched he's no same situation just reps out thinking and outsmarting the enemy that just takes that just takes patience honestly i think a lot of people get so fed up with this game that they think they'll never be good enough so they don't even try that aspect i honestly if i if i had to say and i'm i'm including goats in this too i'm including people with three four five kds who have very little wins when it comes to winning brs i'd say five percent of the player maybe less than that three percent of the player base actually use strategy as a tool and i'm not talking about oh let's go gatekeep this enemy i mean from front to end from beginning to end of the match reading the circles going after objectives trying to decide what the enemy's about to do playing cover and concealment basically everything we've been saying in these videos and i'm starting to believe it's because honestly players have just given up because they believe they're not going to be as good anybody can be a 2kd player anybody can be a 3kd player just takes time and reps you know, younger people, eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds, they are at a huge disadvantage for sure because they don't have as much time in gaming. But anyone else, dude, it's 100% possible. 100% possible. You don't have to have the best aim in the world. You don't have to have the best movement. You just have to try to improve day in and day out. And also on top of that, dude, try to use strategy to your advantage. Running around aimlessly is never going to help you um, 
ever in any game, honestly. But here we are moving on to Claude, rocking eight kills, and his teammate rocking two. We've got a big game bounty who's going to have to move in. It looks like they're setting up for a gatekeep. We've got ping out at the buy. Now, I like the idea of gatekeeping. Here's a few concerns. One, they got a balloon. They could take the balloon and, and just adjust, which if I was the enemy, I would. I don't know where I'm being gate kept at. I definitely take the balloon, but it looks like they're not going to do that. Two, my concern as far as Orange is concerned is we could get third partied. So as you sit on this hill, look and just be aware. Put yourself in a position where if you get shot in the back, you can run down the hill. And he's kind of in a decent spot for that. You don't always have to be paranoid and looking around 24-7. Just always have a plan of action in case some shit goes south. Targets in my sights. Ghost Riley going in by themselves, getting knocked. Not surprised there. He just eager challenged them one um 1v2 by himself. Great job on Claude coming up behind. He's going for the self. You gotta go for the execute for sure. I don't think the enemy knows we're here. Look, dude, Stidson's jumps in the bathroom. A little bit of movement coming right back out to Ego Challenge. Got to respect the effort, but dude, Claude hitting a quick drop shot. Just a thing of beauty, man. Just a simple drop shot saved his life. Because we were standing still. We were planted. It didn't look like we were going to sidestep or anything, but that drop shot literally just changed the entire, the entire fight. Now, look, we could buy our teammate in a Lodi. That's exactly what I would do to get my homie back. To get back and situate, he can't buy him yet. That's why he's sitting here. That's dumbass glitch, bro. He's got to like wait. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Things like this, I really hope are fixed in Warzone too. He didn't buy a Lodi, and now look at how much money they have. That could be a drastic mistake because now you're having to fight duos by yourself. Not the biggest deal, but I still want my guns. If you know history of Call of Duty matches, right? As much as we play Warzone. Think about it. every time you kill an enemy, what do they have? Some bullshit ass gun, a Krig, a Farah, shit you don't want, right? Uh, a, a Bison. So I wish they, I wish they had a loadout right now. Not to mention they get we're at twenty seven thousand dollars. So it's not like we're saving money for a Ferrari. It just comes down to the decision making. That's something Claw just didn't even think about. Let's see what weapons he ended up getting. Oh, see, this is this is what I'm talking about right here. And now we're in a position, we're not safe, we're being gate kept by satellite. Our teammate can possibly help us, but he's our only saving grace. I don't know what our long range is. Ah, never mind, we're pretty good. To the left, look at, look at the prone. No, you whiffed it. No. All right, these are bots. Now this is, this is a tip for you guys. You gotta identify bots quickly. They're definitely bots. What do you do to bots? You push their shit in. You definitely, I don't care how bad you think you are. I guarantee you're not worse than them. Push their shit in, son. Look at this. Look at this. Now you got to knock. Take advantage of that. All of us going at the same time. Come on, baby. Full send that. Let's just switch the claws he's about to do. Allows them to res. Playing the wall really slow. Again, the enemy's got a plate. Nice crack. You got him dead to rights. Push that shit in, boy. Oh, the movement. Now look, his hesitation on pushing allowed his teammate to get some shots off on us. The moment I had him cracked, I would have instantly pushed to him. But you don't even have to push directly to him and face check him. You can just vault over the wall and then jump back over and get some shots off. There are many ways in this situation to take this fight on. This lobby's actually really healthy, surprising health. Oh yeah. It's one of those lobbies. I might have to change my vote, dude. I, I promise to God, I'm not VPN this son. This is this is just it is what it, it's called. Duty luck, man. But I, I promise you, I promise you this: the lobbies I am actually playing in are wilds. The lobbies that I spectate half the time, wild in another atmosphere. <laughs> And look, when it comes to sniping again, dude, I'm a huge proponent just taking all the shots. Like, if you're in a bad spot and you don't want to reveal your position, of course, don't shoot. But just randomly pop shot like this, shoot as much as you can. The moment you see him, try to flick it to him. The, the, one of the reasons why I got really good at flicking to enemies is because I'm always taking crazy-ass shots. If you watch my gameplay every now and then, even with an AR, I'll sometimes just flick it 
from the enemy to enemy and just tap fire, if that makes any sense. Just trying to practice my flicks. Well, same thing with sniping. The more you guys are actively trying different tactics, the better off you are. I was talking that shit about this gun, but damn. It's able to hit fire half that. Also, I made a tweet the other day, dude. And I stand by it. You shouldn't be able to hit fire weapons and be that accurate at range. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You should, like, if you're going to hit fire, you have to be at least five feet away for that shit to really matter. Ten feet plus, dude. I, it shouldn't even be a conversation. Except for maybe, like, a Mat 10. Something that's small and just controllable. But PPSH at, what was that? A hundred feet away? No. No. Absolutely not. Not to mention, he was just revealing his head, so... We were getting all those hits on his head. Hit firing a PPSH to play out playing Hetty is just wild to me. Absolutely wild. Well, a ghost come up. We're at rocking six kills. Your boy, what, he has 11? So we're sitting on 17 as a squad. Now look, when it comes to mines, I, I hate mines. My gameplay always changes drastically when I'm at mines, but the blessing of this one is it's not. You get to rotate to the dig site hill, this is exactly where you want to be. You've got to get here early. You've got to start playing it early. You're gonna have people coming in from dig site. You're gonna have people coming in from transit. It guarantees the person down there. And of course storage. But look, if you and your duo team can secure this hill, you can gatekeep everyone out of storage as long as you're just keeping your eye on your back. It's a relatively easy task to do. Your biggest concern, of course, is going to be people inside of there. But again, you can hear them coming up. What I hate from what I'm seeing now is we're committing to mines. This is a bad move. This isn't even like, well, it, no, no. This is a trash move. Don't do this. Now, why is this bad? Well, one, we don't have balloons. No portable balloons. Two, this one's going to be out of zone the next 10 seconds. So what's that mean? Well, it means you have to make a gas play to take a balloon and get to the high ground. But... The longer we wait to get that hill, look what's happening. People are already rotating to it. People are tr already trying to get positioned. So now we're late to the party. So with all that being said, when this circle does shift, if it favors anywhere but this little area, we're dead. Everyone in mines will be dead. Even the best of players are gonna have the hardest times working themselves out of this situation. All right, good shots, man. Good shots. Enemy just committing to that death. Don't know why. Just crawl one foot, you're safe, but... Again, I love, I don't care how bad a sniper is. If I spectate a sniper and he's at least shooting the bitch, I'm happy with him, son. Because the only way you're going to get better at sniping is literally shooting as much as you fucking can. It, you have to develop an eye. You have to you have to understand the lead of the sniper. You have to understand the, sh the shot, the chamber speed, um, the ADS speed. Everything about sniping is important. If you didn't notice through the doorway, we had motion. We saw a head creeping around inside that building, so there is a team there. Again, and this is where strategy is important, and this is why these tip videos will be even more important to you guys in Warzone 2. Warzone 1, strategy and stuff will help you guys win and definitely get better, um, and a lot of you guys have. But Warzone 2, if you're going to stand a chance, you better get down with the strategy. Um, it's going to be a little bit slower pace. It's not going to be as, as, as fast paced. No balloons to help you get around, no transits to help you get around, at least at the start. Um, the circles splitting into multiple circles. That's going to be a very interesting thing to try to predict how that happens. Um, it's going to be important. It's going to be imperative that if you have, if you guys haven't understood strategy and rotations yet, you better, you better. Now look, watch what happens. We're we're never secured to death, right? Death is never guaranteed. There are so many variables that could happen. As we're rotating, other teams can fight each other, right? We might get blessed because the team shooting at us is third party. We don't know what's going to happen, but. All I know is the guys up here, they got this bitch in the bag as long as they don't play dumb. Now, I will say good on orange, getting a nice rotation up. This is our only move. Do not commit to here. Why? No cover. You have a rock, but you're vulnerable from the hill. You have a rock, but again, vulnerable from the hill. Not a good spot. So this is their only play at this point. They are very lucky. Hill's not looking down here. Because if I was playing this hill right now, what would I be doing? I'd be watching for people to come in from the only compound left in the zone. But again, that just goes with the fact that this lobby is what it is. And even if you guys are actively getting low KD lobbies, eventually you're going to have a 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, and it's going to be a nightmare to fight in. And that's where being more strategic with better players can really benefit you. Throw 
A little bit of movement just threw us off pace right there. Look at that shit. We planted our feet. He did not. Now, I don't know why the enemy didn't go up there and challenge him. I don't, also don't know why he's not plating up. I don't know why we're not plating up. So many questions. It's a 1v2 situation, and they just threw it. They just threw it hard. And let's talk about movement again. Just having a simple B-hop to the side literally was a difference between Ace and the other dudes deciding who the winner of that fight was going to be. Solo versus solo versus solo versus solo versus solo. This is a rare commodity, ladies and gentlemen. But it seems to be a decent player. Playing the zone. We've got the high ground. The only thing he needs to worry about is someone sneaking up on him. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Lower right would be my biggest concern. Under us would be the biggest concern. But other than that, man, I don't really know what else to worry about. If there is someone under this ledge just sitting in a bush, they could be a huge problem if they just ADS walk up to us. So as you're fighting, as you're looking around, just make sure you're watching your back. And he's doing a decent... Oh, yep, 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 yep. Called it. Yep. That's the shit right there you got to worry about. Don't know why we didn't pick the streak up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's why we... <laughs> oh, Warzone. All right, again, the, look, yeah. So you're probably wondering what he's doing. He dropped his weapons to pick up the guns, blocking the the precision. Now, again, common sense for a lot of people, but a, a lot of people watching this video right now don't know things like that. I take it back. So another strategy he's doing, I'm glad he's doing it because we really don't talk about it often, um, is he's pinging bushes to see if he can get a live ping. It's a really good strat especially in game like this because of how people play and i'm not even angry that his ads walking just in the fact that everyone's going to be in a bush it's a 1v1v1 right now i don't like this i will say that i never i never want to reward proning like this we need to be walking around we need to be looking we'd be hopping up over these ledges to get some visual we know there's an enemy down there because we were about to shoot at him earlier Get ace, you're better than this, brother. What are we do? What are we doing, homie? No, 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 no. We have the vantage point because we're on the highest part of the of the map right now. We're on the highest part. You know where he's at, honestly, dude. You could use the precision to force him out of his area and get some easy beams. Circles rotating. I'd, I'd want to go ahead and kill these guys before the rotation. Just because we don't know where the second player is at. If we just try to rotate with the zone, we're going to end up having to fight one. And we could get third party by the other. There you see your left. You're, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. He's going to die. Oh, no! Oh, I thought he was about to pull it out of his ass, man. Wait. Wait. Wait! No way! Yo! Ace! Dude. I'm a, I don't know if that was FOV or not. I'd like to think so. No one's that blind. And again, Ace is a decent player. But, bro. That was wild, dude. Holy shit. That was absolutely crazy. What are the odds he's going to win that fight? 0%. Now look, simple tip. If you're in a 1v1, bro, and you get the knock, just go kill him, son. Just go kill him. Please.